grace, power, ministry, and love. Incline your ears to wisdom and your hearts to understanding. Receive the word of God according to knowledge. Welcome to preach. To preach. To preach. Be a voice, not an echo. Join Minister Chantrell for today's message. Good day, beloved. This is Dream Vision number four. I'm going to keep it rolling uh, to get this stuff going. Please catch them. These are some serious things the Lord just showed me. Please do not miss these visions and please pray. Um, I'm going to go right into this one. Um, this vision I had November 23rd, 2017. Again, I've been busy. And any of you who follow my channel know why I've been busy. Um, uh, the Lord play, using me in the other capacities. He's called me. Um, this vision I entitled Warning, the Judas Kiss of Betrayals. Prepare your hearts in Christ. There's going to be great betrayal. Why? Because it has been sent out. The judgment against the body, it, 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 it's been sent out. Y'all going to see some crazy stuff. Pastors falling. Y'all going to see things going on. And I think of it brought to mind the scripture that if you smite the, smite the shepherd, the, the, the sheep will the scatter, okay? I'm going to read this dream because it was very simple, but very symbolic. And the Lord started speaking to me after I woke. This is another vision that was clear and to the point. I was shown various situations. You know, he'll just show a flash. You'll see in another flash. You'll see a situation. Various situations. Um with people, places, and families, just gathering and doing what they do. I was looking on as usual, and then suddenly I was looking on, and I was in them seeing through the eyes of whoever these people were. So I'm looking on, and then I always, sometime at the last vision, he puts me in the place of the person. So I'm looking on, and I'm seeing through their eyes, feeling what they feel, thinking what they think, okay? I won't back down. That's how he's always done it with me. It ain't changed. And um, as I, as this happened, uh, this person appeared to be, uh, you know, I'm showing family that just get together and different families gathering together doing what they do. And then I showed I was showing another family, and then it was somebody that apparently they had not seen for a while, or uh, or maybe it was just somebody that it, uh, it seemed like they were just really happy to see them. And that's probably why I think it wasn't for a while. They like they were so happy to see them. And when this person did that. Um, he walked up and then and he, I see this man's face so clear, disheveled, unkempt looking fellow. And when he got up close, he didn't look that way till he was up close. He looked like a normal person. But when he came up to this person to greet them, he took him by the shoulders. He leaned in and he kissed them on their right cheek. And I could feel the wetness and everything. People don't understand vision. You feel everything cold. You feel a little spit and everything. You feel it all. And you feel the kiss on the cheek. And then he pulled back. And when he went to pull back, at the moment he kissed, it was a, oh God, the word I'm looking for. Uh, I'm not going to say despair, uh, uh, uneasiness. And I woke up. And so I prayed. Um, I continually prayed on the right cheek. Very important. It wasn't no coincidence that it was on the right cheek and not the left, okay? Because we from the right hand, which is the, the glory and the authority and the righteousness. So this tells me that it is a betrayal in the house, in the family, people who are close to you. And I prayed, and it wasn't until uh, hours later that I was in there uh, doing my hair. And when well, no, I was actually cleaning the bathroom, different day, I was, I was cleaning the bathroom. And I was talking to the Lord, and he said, the kiss of Judas, the kiss of of Judas. This is a time of great betrayal. The Bible speaks on various scriptures about how the, the even the sons, the, the, the sons and daughters will turn against their parents. They're going to sneak in privately because they're going to be of the enemy and they're going to tell what you're doing when it comes time when they start persecuting even more. He said the kiss of Judas. Time of betrayal. People you thought would never harm you, the closest people, the people that the enemy has sown in among you, people that you love are about to do you like you've never seen. It's going to be betrayal. 
in and out of the house of God. And when I say in and out of the house, I mean if you got building of churches you go to and your home are in the body of Christ. And I don't believe it's limited to that, but the reason I say that is I keep, and I have to stay with that, is there was a kiss on the right cheek. It was a kiss of Judas. And even the hidden ones, the enemy, would be manifested. The, some of the ones that were planted there to act like they love you just to learn some weaknesses, some ways to get you distracted, because once they get you in your emotion, they can close up your, your connectivity with the Lord, because when you wound it, what people don't understand is that demonic forces can possess those wounds. Unforgiveness, bitterness, strife, hurt. That's why you have to let it go so quick. And we're in such a dark hour. You don't have the time you used to because some of the things they're doing with CERN and some of the things they're doing with sacrificing the babies and the killing of these babies. I told you these babies are dying more because of sacrifices. Darkness is increasing. So it will make more, it will make more manifest the darkness in you. So therefore, these dark entities inhabit hurt feelings. And you'll find yourself doing stuff you didn't think you could do. So no matter what, you got to be ready to forgive. That's why I mean gird yourself up in Christ. Because the Lord said the kiss of Judas. Time of betrayal. Great betrayal. Okay? I'm going to read some scriptures right here. Psalms 55, 11 through 14. And that's why the Lord had me remove some people from my life that I loved. And he showed me who they were. And they didn't choose to repent when the Lord sent me to reprove them. And I believe he did that so I could see. He said they would not hearken unto you, so they would not hearken unto me. They, they, they didn't hearken unto me, so they're not going to hearken unto you. Just like he sent Ezekiel, he sent them. Why do he send people? Because judgment's about to hit them. If that's the case, the Lord would just knock them off. Why would he send you thinking that he's gonna, they're going to hurt you when they won't hurt him? But authority and things happen in this earth through a man, through a person. So by the time he sends a person, you're in trouble. Okay? If you don't hearken, you're in trouble. You know, and what's so tripped out is the Lord will send some people when he knows you ain't going to listen to them because you didn't listen to him. It's usually stuff he's been trying to get you to look at. Let me read this. Psalms 55, 11 through 14. Wickedness is, the midst of, wickedness is in the midst of us. Coincidence? I will think not. Deceit and guile depart not from our streets. This is so if he's speaking on that because wicked's in the midst. So, so deceit and guile is not going to depart from them now. For it was not an enemy. Y'all understand? It was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me. That magnified himself against me. They're going to magnify themselves against you. Get ready. They're going to magnify themselves against you, those who you thought were with you. Then I would have hid myself from him. You would be smart enough to cut him off. But it was thou, a man or a woman, a person, my equal, which means you in Christ, my guide and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together. What is counsel? Word. Y'all talk together sweetly and walked unto the house of God in company. Okay? These are the people that's about to betray you. Luke 22, 47 through 48. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, you hear that? A multitude and he that's called Judas. They're going to gang up. I want y'all to take this word. They're going to be ganging up. And he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss? You know, I find this interesting, but I'm going to stop right there. Because he said, he said that Judas went to kiss him. But, I'm going to look more into that. Jesus said unto him, did he get to kiss Jesus? I don't know. <laughs> to be continued. Anyway, let me get back on this. Matthew, Mark 10, 34 through 36. Think now, think now. He said, think not. That's what you need to understand. This is why he had to prepare your hearts because it's going to be people you love, okay? Don't mean you don't love them, but you're going to have to depart from them. Uh, Matthew 10, 34 through 36. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. He is dividing the seed of the serpent from the seed of Christ. The wheat from the tares, the sheep from the goats, the just from the unjust, the righteous from the unrighteous. He came to bring a sword. For I am, I am come to set a man at variance against his father. And that means in or out of Christ. Natural and spiritually. And the daughter against her mother and the daughter against a daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law and the man's foes will be those of his own house. Matthew 10, 20 to 27, what I tell you in darkness that speak you in light, what you hear in the ear that preach you on the housetops. 
Okay. I'm going to read uh, 13, uh, John 13. I'm going to say for your own time, Acts uh, 2 and 17. Uh, uh, 2, 17 through 18, about pouring out of the Spirit, John 13 and 19. Now I tell you before it come to pass, that when it come to pass, you will believe that I am he. Uh, Proverbs 29 and 18, where there is no vision, people perish. This is a vision. Start to ask the Lord to reveal those who are around you because the betrayals are about to happen. Uncover them, uncover them, uncover them in the name of Jesus. Second Chronicles, Chronicles 36 and 16. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words until the wrath of the Lord arose, till there was no remedy. There'd be no remedy. First John 4 through 6, 4 verse 6. He that knoweth God heareth us. You know God, you hear. He that is not of God heareth us not. Ezekiel 33, 33. And when this comes to pass, and lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. Return unto me, according to Malachi 3 and 7, and I'll return unto you. I'm warning the wicked, according to Ezekiel 33, 7 through 9, and I'm warning the righteous, according to Ezekiel 33 and 20. Or 33 and 2, 33 and 20. And the Lord says, according to Revelation 16 and 15, 16 verse 15, Behold, I come quickly. Keep your garments, lest you be walk naked. This is another warning. There's about to be betrayal. And I need you to pay attention to who you have around you. Give your life and your heart and your mind to the Lord today. Grace be with you. Stay tuned for the next dream. Take this before the Lord. Pray with me and pray for me. Uh, yes, stay in prayer in one accord with the saints. Because I'm telling y'all, y'all, it's about to get rough in and out of the home. But you need to know that the Lord that keeps you, he is the lift up of your head. And there is no salvation, nor safety in any other. His name is Jesus. Yahshua HaMashiach, nor the name by which men must be saved. Grace be with you. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.